Oh hey guys, how are you? So, a bit of a random video I suppose, but I was just thinking about what method I typically use to find a job. So, first thing I would do is create a CV if you don't have one, or update your CV with what you've been doing recently. Um, here is an example of my CV. I've got my recent experience, different companies I've worked at, for example. Um, I've got my contact details on here, my website um email um got a lot of my skills and previous experiences and uh there's quite a lot of good stuff on here i've um kind of got my education um london south bank university very nice oh go away now i don't have every job i've ever done on here so for example i did a lot of retail work when i was working at well when i was at college and university for example so some of the time i was working seven days a week um kind of got a bit burnt out uh, i guess really with that but um yeah i don't actually have that listed down um i do have like nearly all my office jobs and um sort of temporary work that i've done over the years um, i won't go into too much detail but uh i will say i spent a long time at isat limited and i was a python developer and marketing manager so I started off as the kind of marketing manager. Um, we were a company of about 30 people at the time. And later my role kind of transitioned more into Python development. Now it took me a whole year to develop my Python skills. And um, we had some really good engineers there who kind of taught me Python as well. So I got a really, really good grounding in Python. And, you know, these engineers were properly good. They knew what they were doing. So, um... I really value my time at ISAT. Then I moved on to Microsoft UK, who were great to work for, um, and MRM McCann, um, big marketing agency in London. Um, really, really enjoyed working at Microsoft UK. People there were great. Um, and I did a bunch more other jobs as well. Arrow Precision, don't recommend them. Not a nice place to work. <laughs> Monitor Limited, they were lovely to work for, actually. Um, though it was only um, a temporary contract doing some remote work. Then I went to Rentskill Initial for a year, and um, the role was hybrid, but um, it was mostly remote, so we were going to the office every two um, weeks. And um, we would also have a lot of amazing events going on, so uh, it was really, really good fun to work for Rentskill Initial. Again, lovely people. Um, and I'm currently working for DMH Stallard, but my contract ends in well at the end of a month so i'm going to be looking for a new position so I kind of thought i'd start looking now um again dmh stallard are an absolutely lovely company and it's kind of a shame that i'm not going to stay on with them but it was only basically a seven month contract i mean it was technically six months but i think um it was kind of like seven months for whatever reason anyway but um yeah, that's my CV. So first thing I would do if you're looking for a company to work for is get this all updated. Um, I would also check things like um, the spelling. Um, ChatGBT is actually great for checking your CV. But do bear in mind you need to, if you're in the UK, make sure that it's running in British English because it will automatically do a lot of stuff in American English, which won't look good. But uh, yeah, ChatGBT can improve your text and can give you suggestions. Um, did I mention the basic template is the Google standard CV? Now, I kind of chose the Google CV because I kind of figured it's probably optimized fairly well for AIs, which are kind of reading my CV. So, I mean, that's the main reason. OK, so the next thing I would do is once your CV is updated, I would go check on your LinkedIn and linkedin i kind of like it i mean if you click on your um icon assuming you've got linkedin set up if not i would recommend getting it set up um you can add a frame um if you click on your profile picture and this one says open to work so this kind of lets people know when they see you that you know you're looking for a new job um there's also hiring or else there's original now, there is also the option to only show open to work to recruiters. So if you're looking for a new job, but you don't want your existing company to see, then you can basically just show this to recruiters or whoever's looking for someone to employ. 
um, easy thing to do. And um, I would also get your profile up to date as well. So um, yeah, let's look at my profile then. I guess this is it. There's obviously a whole bunch of junk on here, but um, actually, wait, is there a way of just seeing my profile? There should be. Anyway, recently posted my resume and posted that I might be looking for a job. Um, I've only got one like on this post, but typically people go kind of crazy for anything I post on LinkedIn. Um, I guess I've got my experience up to date here. So content migration specialist at DMH Stallard. To be honest, I'd love to get into a junior developer job. Um, maybe developing Python or something. Because it's something I really, really enjoy doing. And it's a bit more challenging than just building websites and stuff. Obviously worked at um, RenzQ Initial before that. So yeah, it's got my details. Um, would also make sure that um, all the information matches on your CV and on LinkedIn. Because people might be checking that. Also, the other thing is, if someone asks you uh, if you've got a gap on your CV, which I'm sure everybody has, they ask you what you've been doing, um, just have an answer prepared. Um, just make sure that, you know, you, you kind of go into an interview and you've already got an idea of what you're going to talk about as well. It's also really good that if you're going to go into an interview, that you have like two questions at least prepared in your head what you want to ask them basically about the job because that turns the interview into more of a conversation and it kind of shows initiative. So because my contract is coming to an end soon, one of the things I've done is I've tried to economize as much as possible. So I've looked at my bank account and anything that I don't really need, I've tried to cancel. This might include stuff like uh, TV packages. Um, Just between you and me, I was thinking recently that if you really enjoy Netflix, for example, then I don't think there's any reason why you couldn't hypothetically buy Netflix in India, which I believe costs about a pound or a pound fifty a month, and um, basically stream that through a VPN. Although um, I haven't really looked into it, but I just thought it was an interesting idea. But um, yeah, all the little things that you might sign up to, um, anything on Amazon, for example, that's recurring, um, I was signed up to Audible, so I kind of cancelled that. Um, there were a load of other stuff, like I actually had ChatGPT4, um, which is lovely to have and really, really useful, but it's also £20 a month here, which is actually a lot of money. I mean, that's quite a lot over the course of a year. And when I get another job and I'm a bit more secure, I'll probably re-get ChatGPT4 because it is so incredibly useful. Um, I mean, Chat... 3.5 is still good don't get me wrong but um I actually use it quite a lot for work as well so minimize your expenses as much as possible and that way hopefully your money will last a lot longer from your previous role you're assuming you still have any <laughs> i mean i've had a lot of expenses recently so it's been a bit difficult for me but nevertheless i'm sort of as lean as possible now in terms of economics. Well, that being said, I am literally playing World of Warcraft right now, which is um, a game I pay for. But, um, you know, I really enjoy Warcraft, so... Wow, I think I'm phasing in and out of places. So, the next thing we are going to do is do a Google search, or whatever your preferred search engine is, for top 10 UK recruitment sites. Obviously, you can adjust this to whatever country you are in. Um, and I went for the first result here. So, top 12 UK popular job board lists. And um, I'm sure this is like a paid thing. But here we have um, a list of all the job sites that you can go on. And what I would recommend you do is go down the list, okay? And upload your new CV to each of these and make sure that you are tagged in looking for work. And also make sure if you're not signed up to um, some of these, you don't have to be if you don't want to, but I'm probably signed up to most of these. Just um, create an account, upload your CV, have a look on the sites for any kind of jobs. Um, the other thing is, it can be really difficult to find a job. And um, there have been times in my career where I might have gone six months without actually having employment. 
And it is awful and it is stressful and, you know, you, the government get involved and may make you jump through all kinds of hoops. But, um, yeah, give yourself six months to find another job, you know, and try to do a little bit every day, you know, get into a bit of a routine. Um, OK, one thing that is really important and um, it might be obvious to some people, but make sure that your mobile phone is freaking charged at all times, you know, and on you when you go out. Because you really don't want to be missing text messages or email alerts from people who want to get in contact with you about a job. Um, it might sound obvious to most people, but um, yeah, it's just one thing you really need to do. I don't think I'm actually on Glassdoor, but nevertheless, what happens is when you upload your CV to, say, Total Jobs, um, it kind of gives all the recruiters a bit of a notification that you are now um, looking for work and it also makes it look like you are a new person on the market you know because your job your cv's been updated and everything else so yeah you can go down the list update your cv and your profile on all of these websites um other ones that you want to obviously and then i would say we can start looking for a job proper so if we go back to linkedin here um, I'm going to click on jobs. Now, I think it's really important that the um, that you kind of get used to um, the interface with LinkedIn. Um, my LinkedIn is on dark mode. I don't have LinkedIn premium or anything like that. Um, but if you want to start a free trial, it's up to you. I've never done it personally. In the case, the recommended jobs. Uh, we got Loma Systems in Farnborough. Marketing content creator. Sounds kind of interesting, actually. One week ago, 10 applications. Um, obviously, I've still got a month to go at my existing job. But sometimes when you start a new job, you can um, sort of say to them, look, I need a month um, kind of notice or whatever at my existing job. So it isn't always an issue. It's OK. I've got easy apply sort of up to date here. So, um, I suppose let's just apply for this one. Actually, no, let's read the job before we apply for it, obviously. Um, want to work for a company who protect the consumer whilst also having a highly commercial focus? We keep food safe from physical contaminants, saving lives and reducing waste. So we sound like a good company. Um, let's look at the job description. Um, I'm not saying you should do this, but if you really wanted to, you should show this in ChatGPT to get it to summarise it for you. <laughs> but no, that, that'd be really lazy. Uh, you will drive the creation and management of technical content. Um, this will include website, our, um, website offering, development of um, technical marketing documentation, collateral photography video videography so i can do all of that stuff i've done loads of stuff in the past um centralized role taking a lead on content creation um so yeah look through the list this looks pretty good to me tech savvy quick learner yep yep in design i've used that um adept at a photoshop um i've used both of these now Make sure these are in your CV, for example, um, or that you've mentioned that you've done similar kinds of work related to this. Um, if you want to use keywords, then I guess you could use Photoshop or InDesign, for example. Um, hey, HTML, C style sheets. Um, yeah, it's, it's all fairly standard stuff. Um, let's have a look at the salary. Um, well, it doesn't actually mention um, a salary um, on here, which is interesting, but um, maybe it's just how it works. So, okay, let's go easy apply. It's already got all my information. <laughs> you know, you guys could just email me or call me. I don't actually care, whatever, really. <laughs> uh, okay, so I've got my two resumes. Um, okay, resumes have not been updated for a while, 2023. Um, actually, no, no, 627. 2023. Let's um, upload a new resume, actually. So I'm going to use this one. Um, there we go. Upload cover letter. So, okay, I've got um, a um, cover letter here that um, sort of mentions some of the stuff I've done previously. To be fair, I haven't actually updated my cover letter in ages, so I probably need to go away and have a little look at this. Um, 
Now, some people recommend for you to use a different cover letter for every company you go for. I think that's probably pretty wise. Um, so, this is pretty generic, actually. I'm excited to start my application for the job, whatever it is, blah, blah, blah. Um, my extensive experience in digital marketing, social media management, blah, blah, blah. Make me a good fit for this position. So, um, I could look through the um, job on the website and just in the opening paragraph, I could put in some of the key skills that I have that m will make them interested um, in me, potentially. Or um, I suppose we could skip the cover letter for now and um, I'll do this at a later date or whatever. Um, I think Dear Hiring Manager's okay. Again, get ChatGBT or a friend to check this all for you. And obviously give it the prompt for it needs to be in proper English, not American English. <laughs> no offense to my American friends here. But um, anyway, I'll do this later. But yeah, here's an example of a job I could fairly easily apply for. It's in my local area. Um, I've got experience doing this. Looks like it's a fairly nice big company as well. Um, okay, so in the UK, um, I would recommend Indeed. They're pretty good. Glassdoor, haven't used them. So all jobs are okay. Read are actually really, really nice. Um, one of the things I would do is I would try to build a relationship with some of the recruitment agents. So, for example, I know a recruitment agent who works at uh, Read, and uh, she's actually found the last two jobs for me. And here's the thing, I've just sent her a message and she's just sent me a message back saying, hey, I've got this job, it'll be perfect for you. Why don't you go and um, have an interview? And uh, yeah, both times it's worked out really, really well. So building great relationships with um, some of the recruitment agents are, you know, pretty great, I guess. I think we're getting near the end of the video because I'm running out of things to say. I did want to say another um, strategy which I've used in the past is make a top 10 or top 15 list of all the companies you'd love to work for. Um, obviously, Microsoft would be high up on my list. And um, probably Google as well. I mean, I'd love to actually work for Google. And uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of companies I'd love to work for. Um, just make a list somewhere and then just go on their website and check it and see if there's any available jobs um, for you in that particular company. Now, also... Bear in mind, there are going to be a load of fantastic companies out there that you've probably never heard of before. Or maybe you've heard them, but you've never really sort of thought that you could work there. There's no reason why you can't, you know, look for any suitable jobs. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of the factors that you should definitely consider is uh, location. So, for example, um, the past two jobs I've had have been mostly remote working. Which I really like because you just kind of log on in the morning. You know, you do your work. Um, you chat to people on the computer, obviously. Um, and um, everything's pretty hunky-dory. And um, it's, it's obviously pretty easy. But if you have a long way to go in the morning to commute, um, obviously factor that in with how much you want from a company in terms of um, pay and stuff. For example, if I was working in London, um, I'm fairly close to London. I'm about 45 minutes away. London is a right um, pain to get to. And I don't mind going there like once a week or twice a week or something. But um, if you're going to be working in London, for example, you probably need a higher wage because getting to London costs money. And um, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. There are loads of people who work in London. But the other thing is... Um, Think about what kind of uniform you want. You know, there's a lot of jobs in London, for example, you have to wear the sort of um, really formal looking suit. So again, um, you kind of maybe need to do, I don't know, half an hour or an hour's maintenance on your clothing every day. Um, iron your shirts and get yourself looking all smart and neat, which, you know, you should do anyway. But um do kind of factor all of that in you know when you're sort of thinking about where you want to work and um like i say sometimes a medium company or a small company might be great another thing you should definitely consider is working for an ethical company there's um a lot of companies that do amazing things in the world and some companies for kind of do i don't know average things in the world you could say um 
just think about if you want to work for an ethical company and sort of make a difference because again that is um going to be affecting you know what kind of job you go for for example um another thing i would definitely do is on Glassdoor, for example i think you can look at um people and um get anonymous feedback about what it's like to work there and now i shouldn't say this but there's been one or two well basically one company and i didn't enjoy the atmosphere there at all it was um very very unpleasant very unprofessional and um I was going to say, I mean, I really don't like the culture of that one particular place, but everywhere else I've worked, I've been absolutely um, loving it, you know. But um, yeah, do have a look at what the company social life is like, for example. Then again, I guess there are going to be people out there who say, look, I'm just looking for a job. I don't really care where it is. I think that's kind of a bad attitude to have because... You know, you are a valuable person and you're going to be selling your services to someone or some organisation. And um, you are inherently valuable. You know, you are valuable as a human being. Your skills and expertise and your time are valuable. Um, so you want to make sure that the relationship works for both of you, you know. You really need to make sure that you're going to be happy with the company. And um, just think about what your priorities are, basically. For example, maybe you think it's important that you've got flexible working. And some people might like that. Remote working, for example. Um, it's pretty great, I have to say. So if you want, if those are priorities for you, then you can do that uh, kind of well, thinking about what you want to do for your career, I guess. Oh man, why do I keep pulling all these creatures and things in this game? I guess another thing you can do and i apologize if the video is a bit rambly but think about where you want to be in like five years time you know um because maybe you want to change what area you work in you know because what you're doing now isn't necessarily what you're going to be doing in five years time so um think about what kind of skills do you need um do you need to take additional training do you need to um i don't know take a course or um even online courses can be, you know, very affordable and effective. Um, so, again, do you need um, any extra qualifications, for example? Um, think about, like, what you enjoy doing, you know? Um, what is it that you like the most? You know, what gets you out of bed? What kind of are you passionate about? If you're really, really passionate about something, then you're going to do a much better job because you're going to have more energy more concentration and uh you know this is a great place to jump in the game if you want to <laughs> i would recommend it though <laughs> because then you gotta like go down there and get your body and stuff and uh yeah i wouldn't do that <laughs> okay so some tips let's say you um you get a job and you get an interview for the job and um a lot of people will these days do an online screening um beforehand so um you want to download like um software like if you're going to be using zoom or something um if you need to download it then you know it might be worth doing that in advance um so before a job interview i think it's really useful to think about i've already mentioned this but what kind of things do you um want to know about the company it's really good if you ask two questions about the company, for example, and try to turn the interview into more of a sort of two-way conversation because ultimately you're interviewing them and they're interviewing you. So you both want to be happy with um, everything, basically. So um, I guess try not to get too stressed about the interview. Um, I mean, Patrick Stewart said this, you know. He, he said before he went on stage, he would kind of say something along the lines of, I don't care. Except he used more uh, colourful language recently. So, um, I'm not necessarily saying you should do that, but just kind of before the interview, um, just say, you know, whatever the outcome is, it's fine. You know, the best outcome will happen what, no matter what. So, um, just try to relax into the interview and have a good conversation. You know, don't get too anxious. It's difficult because I always get pretty anxious at a job interview and then I, I'm not very fluent. 
sometimes and um, I can come across as a bit anxious. People have said that I need to make more eye contact <laughs> sometimes, which is um, great because, you know, they should put in a, in a job advert. Like, the most important thing is that you look into people's eyes because that's really important. But yeah, people seem to think that is really important. So yeah, good eye contact, just be nice, charming, be see lovely and clean. Um, Good clothing, um, deodorant, obviously all of that stuff is pretty obvious, but um, yeah, it's worth saying anyway. And good old handshake is good. Um, what I would do these days in a sort of post-COVID world is um, if people want to touch elbows or um, maybe they don't want to um, sort of shake hands anymore, that's fine. Just... Um, follow what the other person's doing you know so if they go to shake your hand if you want to obviously and you feel comfortable with that you can you know shake the hand etc um another little tip is to improve your performance make sure that you're not hungry uh, this might sound really really weird but um there's a surprising amount of performance difference if you're hungry than um if you've recently eaten you know um, people who have recently eaten tend to be more empathetic. Uh, they might be better at answering questions. So I'm not saying you have to like eat loads of stuff, but maybe just have a sandwich or um, if you don't have any food, then, you know, at the end of the day, you can have like some sugar, have like um, a polo mint or some um, sweets that smell nice on your breath. Um, it, it does actually make a difference if you have a little bit of sugar or um you know some good food before you go into an interview if they ask you for a drink um it's entirely up to you but uh if you drop your drink it's obviously you're gonna look really bad but um yeah i mean if they offer you a coffee or something i would turn i would generally say yeah uh, oh yes please but um one thing that i think people really like is if you um sort of put your cup away once you've um had the interview and um you know you kind of like wash it up a little bit so um you know just kind of show that you are like a conscientious person and you don't want to burden anybody else i think that just looks nice um maybe i'm getting into the nitty-gritty too much oh here's a tip if you are going for a job with the civil service in the uk they have a really really strange policy and um They'll ask you a question and they will expect you to um, talk for five minutes um, or something to answer the question. So, um, again, I think this is only with the British Civil Service because they're a bunch of really strange people. But, um, yeah, you just need to have like a speech prepared in your head and then um, just jump into the speech, you know. They ask you, what have you been doing for the past five years? Um, maybe have a recent copy of your cv saved up there you know maybe um read it for example um before you go to the interview you can even bring a copy of your cv in with you if you want to or um a piece of paper or something to jot notes down um i wouldn't touch your phone uh even if it's like a tech job because it can kind of look a bit rude if you're looking at your phone instead of looking at the person and they'll instantly think oh god we don't want this person around they can't concentrate on us you know so um definitely keep your phone in your pocket on silent i would say so you know feel free to ignore me if you want to <laughs> so uh let's talk briefly about recruitment agents seeing as how i'm sort of waffling here but it's fine um so i used to think that recruitment agencies were like a complete waste of time and um they were just noise basically getting between people who want jobs and people who want to employ people but um that's actually not the case at all um i'm much wiser than that now so a lot of companies um, have to spend an absolute fortune on trying to hire the right people so they'll quite often outsource that to an agency for example so um being on really friendly terms with a lot of these agencies is actually really good because the agencies might get jobs in which are exclusive just to that agency for example um i was in a situation where my employment agent was sort of working with microsoft and i was employed through the employment agency but working for microsoft at the time and um 
it was actually a really really good situation because i don't know i mean there's all kinds of weird corporate laws and stuff but you know being employed by a fruit third person is kind of normal actually so um always be nice and kind and polite to these um agents and yeah do remember that sometimes they will have exclusive opportunities that you might be able to enjoy oh um okay this might be obvious to some people but um if you are going to a place you've never been before i would say um aim to be there at least half an hour early and you don't have to go right into the company um i would say it's acceptable to be like 10 minutes early to any job interview um but yeah you want um, a 20 minute buffer or maybe even an hour buffer if you um if you're going to a place that you've never been before and um the reason is because um there are delays that can happen you know if you're driving in you might get stuck on a motorway um if you are late for example to an interview it doesn't automatically mean you won't get the job it might make it less likely but it's still 100% worth going in and speaking to them. And um, yeah, just to explain, you know, the situation, like a sort of adult, basically. And um, if you are, you know, polite and mature, you still stand a chance of getting the job if they like you. And, you know, you sort of make clear that this is a pretty unusual situation. Like, I don't know, someone broke down on the motorway and, you know, there was a traffic jam or something. Um, so yeah, it's always worth going. I would also say that if you get a um, job that um, you kind of don't want, but they've offered you an interview, it's worth going to the interview just for the practice. And um, I would always ask for feedback afterwards. Now you might say, Dave, wait, if you don't want the job, then what's the point in going? But like I say, um, the practice is good. It um, shows that you're sort of actively looking for a job. Um, some people might ask you a question like, have you had much interest from other people or whatever? Um, so, you know, you can sort of honestly say, yes, I've um, had quite a bit of interest recently. Um, I'm looking into other jobs, potentially. You know, if they offer you the job and you don't want it, you don't have to sort of take it. Although I, I do think it would be a bit of a weird situation if that was to happen. Uh, it's never happened to me. I've always accepted a job if someone's offered it to me, basically. But, um, I suppose it could happen. Anyway, huh, yeah. I know I, I'm waffling. Anyway, um, I would also treat getting a job as a job in itself. You know, I would actually put the hours in. Um, I think when you're unemployed, it can become easy to become a little bit complacent sometimes. You know, life seems pretty okay. Uh, you might not have much money coming in. Maybe you don't have very many savings. Um, maybe it's not great. But do bear in mind that it is really stressful sometimes being unemployed. So, um, you know, be kind to yourself. And um, I think anyone can kind of be unemployed for a while, you know. It's, so it's not really such a bad thing if you are unemployed for a while. Um, what I would try to say is try to um, maintain your sleep schedule i think it's very very important you get enough sleep every single night um so go to bed at 10 o'clock for example and wake up at nine or eight or seven or whatever oh hey guys had to come away and now i'm back let me have a look at the length of the video oh my god 33 minutes wow that's a lot of good content guys anyway um another thing i thought i would um, mention because i think it's generally good is you don't have to work in the country that you're in a lot of the time you can actually work in uh, different countries for example so um if you don't have like the best opportunities where you are for example you can always look at um, other places because a lot of the time they'll um kind of help you move you know i mean some companies i'm not saying all of them even have packages that might help someone move um you know into another country for example so um I personally don't know if I would want to move away from the UK. I mean, I would consider it, certainly. Um, I mean, I'd love to work in America, but I think one of the problems in America, unless you're in a big city, um, you definitely need a um, car in America. And um, unfortunately, I don't drive. And uh, okay, if you're a young person, 
I would highly recommend one of the things you do is you get a driving license because it's going to massively improve your employability. It's kind of weird, but you know, like they'll say, oh no, we need this thing right now from a shop, you know, and we need it like five o'clock, whatever. You can just go get it, you know, just drive there, whatever. So it's a useful skill to have. Unfortunately, I um did my test, but I never actually passed. Um, so, I mean, I could probably get in a car and just drive it fine. But um, I kind of freaked out on the test a little bit. Which is really, really unfortunate. But um, anyway, yeah, driving is useful. Okay, another thing that people love um, in most jobs is if you know a second or third language. Um, I would say that's a massive boon. Because uh, a while ago, I went for a job interview and it was a fairly local company and the um lady well she was from america she um treated me very very badly and she actually said that i was a stupid person because i only knew one language and um she well i just um thought that was really unprofessional personally because not everybody does know multiple languages i mean i know um a small amount of French, a small amount of Spanish, but they're not conversational, if you know what I mean. Like, I could sort of order in a restaurant in France or Spain, or probably other countries as well. I mean, um, maybe Denmark. Um, I know a little bit of basic Japanese, but then none of these are really conversational. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you know a second language, it's actually a huge advantage. Um, I would also say that if you know something like Chinese or Arabic, or even, I don't know, Spanish or German or whatever the language is, um, there are, you know, really big advantages to that as well. So if you want to learn, learn another language, then um, an app like Duolingo that you can use on your phone is actually quite good. I did um, start um, a few languages on there and um, have improved a little bit. But the nice thing about Duolingo is you can do a little bit every day and slowly become more fluent in another language. So, um, definitely very useful skill to have. Um, I don't personally do this, but you could always, let's say you're commuting on a train, you could always, um, play Duolingo a bit on, on the train and just learn another language that way. Um, another thing is, I think this is also really, really useful. In a job interview once, um, the guy interviewing me asked me what, um, I'd been reading recently. And um, it just so happens that the latest book I was reading was a book on AI. And um, I kind of said about the book and um, he seemed pretty impressed with that because um, actually having a sort of interest in the kind of career you're going for is really, really useful. So if you're going for a um, job in law, for example, then, you know, maybe get yourself a few sort of legal books or, you know, sort of relevant texts that you can read. And here's the thing, I know a lot of people um, might not like reading very much. I think this affects men more than women. Um, there's nothing wrong with audiobooks, you know. I actually find that I retain a lot of information from audiobooks more than I do even from um, sort of written texts. And of course, the other thing is, um, because I don't drive, I use the train quite a lot. So um, if I have to sit on a train for an hour, I'm as happy as Larry listening to a good audiobook, you know? And um, the other thing is, if you lose internet connection, it doesn't really matter because a lot of the time you can just download a book onto your phone. So um, yeah, audiobook is a great way of showing passion. I'm not saying you necessarily bring it up in the interview like, oh, I've been reading a book. <laughs> but um, yeah, it is just good if they kind of ask you about it. Okay, well, the video's gone on for ages, so I thought I might as well continue for a bit. What can you expect when you get your job? Now, I'm going to assume that this is going to be, like, your first job, or maybe your first job in a while, so... What can you actually expect? Well, okay, let's say you do the um, interview. Maybe you get second interview, maybe not. But, um, yeah, they say, we like you, we want to employ you. Okay, so... You're probably going to go to a physical location um, to maybe get a bit of training, even if it's a remote job. So be prepared to go in for like a week or two. Um, 
you're probably going to sit through um, some kind of training. Uh, you're going to get to like know the other people in the organisation. Obviously, this varies depending on the company. But um, for the first like month, people don't actually expect you to um, be like massively contributing because you're still kind of new to the job. You're still kind of learning everything. So even if it all seems like it's really, really complicated and there's loads of information to take in, don't worry, this is actually pretty normal. I would also say it's also pretty normal to be extremely stressed for the first week or two, or at least have like slightly elevated stress levels. Now, if you're working for an experienced company, they won't stress you too much because they'll know that starting a new job at a company can be kind of stressful. So, um... <clears throat> I guess. Oh wow, that guy's so nice. Oh look, he's got the boon. That's interesting. So here's a crazy little technique I sometimes use. So I struggle with people's names sometimes. So there's um, several techniques. For a start, if you're starting at a new company, obviously if you've been there for 10 years, it doesn't really work, but if you're at a new company and someone's been introduced, but you didn't quite catch what their name was, um, if you speak to them later and you're a bit anxious about it, you can say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch your name there. Um, I'm David. And then they'll probably introduce themselves. And um, that's like quite a nice, polite way of kind of getting to know them a little bit, I think. The other thing I do is, um, and this might seem a little bit weird, but it does actually work. Try to associate the person and their name with something else, right? So, for example, if their name is Rose, then um, what you can kind of do is try to imagine the person and what they look like. And then, like, imagine a rose. And, like, it could be a red rose or something. Um, if you need more information, then... Well, no, I mean, that should be fine, but... If you actually try to um, make the memory in your mind bigger, um, it's actually a lot easier to try to remember like who they actually are. I don't think I'm going to use that spirit thing. Oh, I could do. Um, I don't really care about money or anything in there anyway. Um, so um, I guess this um, tip is kind of a little bit optional actually. But, um... <laughs> Pardon me! <laughs> if you, um... If you're working with people from um, different cultures, it can actually be quite nice to learn a little bit about their culture, for example. Um... Why did I do that? So, for example, um, some um, people who you know, might have family from India, for example, might celebrate Diwali or, you know, various other festivals. So, um, you know, I think it's kind of polite to show a little bit of an interest in, you know, other people and, you know, their cultures and stuff. Obviously, if they don't want to talk about it, it's fine and I wouldn't push anyone or anything. But um, I guess it's good to, like, read up a little bit about, um, you know, different cultures, different festivals, different um, times of year that they celebrate. Um, like Eid Mubarak and, um, you know, sort of various other festivals where we see different, important to different um, groups of people. So um, I guess just be a little bit culturally sensitive or whatever. And, you know, if people don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But um, I always thought it was quite nice to, you know, sort of share different cultures and different festivals and things. But yeah, I, I guess that's just a little point on the side there. Anyway, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you liked my little talk. I <laughs> uh, hope you found this useful. And, uh, yeah, let me know how you're doing, you know. And, uh, like, honestly, keep your shin up, you know. Um, things, things will get good, you know. They will. I'm so cold today and hungry. <laughs> oh, well, goodbye.